Is China's towering wall of debt about to tumble down? Imagine an avalanche of debt snowballing down the mountains of China's economy. That's the looming crisis faced by local governments in China. For years, these governments have racked up mountains of debt to fuel growth. But now, with an economy shaken by a pandemic and a real estate crash, the stakes are even higher than ever. Can China's local governments dodge an economic avalanche? Or are we inching toward China's bankruptcy? Join us as we find out more about it. The debt crisis has been in the making for decades. You know, back in 1994, China introduced some fiscal reforms to try and balance out the difference between what the central and local governments were earning. The idea was to streamline tax revenues and lessen the economic gap. But there was a hiccup. The reforms made it so local governments were spending more than they were earning. So to meet their spending requirements, especially for public services and infrastructure, local governments had to look for other ways to raise funds. So the central government came up with a plan and allowed local governments to establish their own financial institutions. These included local government financing vehicles, urban development and investment companies, and public-private partnerships. Imagine these as money-making machines that local governments could use to borrow funds from banks and markets. But here's the twist. These institutions were kind of like those magic shows, where you're not quite sure what's going on behind the scenes. They were a bit unclear, mostly unregulated and pretty risky. And before anyone realized, they had piled up a whole lot of debt that wasn't even showing up in the official budget or stats. Fast forward to 2008 when the global financial crisis hit. China, to counter the impact, launched a big economic plan to inject money into the economy, kind of like a financial vitamin shot. This was a whopping 4 trillion yuan, or $586 billion, package of which around 70% was covered by local governments using their financing vehicles. Not only did this increase their debt, but it also kind of kick-started a real estate boom, like a gold rush but for property. This became a major way for local governments to earn money through land sales and fees. But it also made them heavily dependent on the real estate market, like being overly reliant on one job for all your income. This means when the property market stutters or fluctuates, these local governments become vulnerable. And then almost a decade later, COVID-19 hit the globe. China decided to tackle the virus head-on with a series of super strict measures. We're talking about lockdowns, mass testing, and never-ending quarantines that make staying at home the new normal. These measures put a huge financial burden on local governments, much like if you suddenly had to start buying groceries for the whole neighborhood. While trying to keep the virus in check, local governments were also dealing with a major side effect. All these strict measures disrupted normal life and slowed down the economy, causing a drop in local government's income from taxes, fees and land sales. On top of that, the pandemic triggered a global recession that hit China's exports and foreign investment. Now let's move to 2021, when China's property market took a major tumble. The trigger? Evergrande, China's largest residential developer, defaulted on a whopping $305 billion debt. This sent shockwaves through the country's financial system and economy. The real estate crash dealt a heavy blow to local government's finances, which heavily relied on income from land sales and fees. It was like their safety nets had suddenly vanished. This debt crisis is not just a financial problem, but has also become a big political challenge, especially for President Xi Jinping, who's eyeing a third term in 2023. It's like he's walking a tightrope, trying to balance social stability, preventing a financial ripple effect, while also pushing his ambitious reform and development plans. Internationally, it's a tricky situation for China too. The country has had to renegotiate or even write off some of its overseas loans under the Belt and Road Initiative, which were also staring at default risks or repayment difficulties. So the crisis isn't just shaking China's economy, but also testing its international reputation and influence. And its impacts can be felt throughout the country. Firstly, local governments have been experiencing a money crunch. Their income sources like taxes, fees and land sales have all taken a hit. The strict COVID-19 measures slowed down the economy, and with less spending happening, the governments have been earning less through taxes. It's a tough spot to be in, right? Then came the real estate crash which caused a sharp drop in land sales and fees. Remember when we mentioned that local governments heavily relied on these? So, quite obviously, they are in a tough spot. On top of all this, the central government decided to cut down on the money it transfers to local governments, trying to contain the growing debt issue. Now, while their income has been dropping, the local government's expenditures have been climbing up. 
they have debts to repay, which are more than half of China's GDP. That's like you owing more money than you earn in a year. Add to that the interest payments on their borrowing, which are growing at a rate faster than their income. And let's not forget their responsibilities to provide social welfare and public services like healthcare, education, pensions, and infrastructure. These costs have increased due to the pandemic, an aging population, and the process of urbanization. On top of that, we've got budget deficits, a situation that's not too different from running out of money before the end of the month. According to the Ministry of Finance in 2021, Local government budget deficits reached a whopping 3.8 trillion yuan. That's about $550 billion. This was up from 3.6 trillion yuan in 2020. This financial squeeze has forced local governments to tighten their belts and cut spending on non-essential items. Similar to how you might ditch your gym membership or movie subscription when things get tight. This financial shortfall also reduces the room for local governments to invest in new projects or stimulate the economy. Next, let's talk about default risks. The debt crisis has made it harder for local governments and their financing vehicles to pay back their debts. Some local governments have had to ask banks or bondholders for extensions or concessions. And when some local government financing vehicles defaulted on their bonds or loans, it caused legal issues and panic in the market. This has undermined investor and creditor confidence and raised borrowing costs for local governments. All of this has resulted in social unrest. Imagine the frustration you would feel if you paid for a service and it's either not delivered or the quality is really bad. That's what some local residents have been feeling. They've been protesting against the lack of basic services like heating, transportation, or healthcare. Some residents have been blaming local governments for mismanagement or corruption. Others have demanded compensation or refunds from local governments or developers who haven't fulfilled their promises or obligations. This unrest is testing the political stability and legitimacy of local governments and the central government. So you see the debt crisis in China is not just about numbers, it's about people's lives, their trust in government, and the country's economic health. It's a complex issue with far-reaching implications. And the future of China's local debt crisis? The picture isn't clear yet, and much depends on how things play out economically and politically, as well as how the markets respond. So let's consider three potential scenarios. First, let's entertain the thought if things take a turn for the better and we have a gradual resolution. In this case, we'd see China's economy bouncing back from the blows it's taken from the pandemic and the real estate crash. Local governments would start to earn more from taxes and land sales. Also, the central government would continue to lend a helping hand to local governments with financial transfers, debt swaps, and loan restructuring. Local governments would also need to get better at managing their finances and being transparent about it. If this happens, it's possible that local governments could slowly get out of debt and avoid any major defaults or social unrest. But let's also consider a less rosy scenario, a partial default. Here, China's economy might continue to struggle, leading to ongoing fiscal stress and less revenue for local governments. The central government might decide to only bail out certain local governments that are strategically important or pose a systemic risk. Local governments might resort to risky or unclear financing channels, and investors and creditors could become more wary. This could lead to some local governments or their financing vehicles failing to pay their debts, which could result in legal issues and market panic. It's like a shaky house of cards that could collapse with the slightest nudge. Will China find a way to gradually resolve its local debt crisis? Or are we looking at a potential financial meltdown? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to tune in to our next video for more content like this.